Happy October Seattle area homeowners. Today we are going to look at new construction property values. So if you're thinking about buying a new home, you can get an idea of what to expect when it comes to the market. I'm realtor Emily Cressy here. And today what we're looking at is the September statistics from the Northwest Multiple Listing Service. These are shared with us in arrears. That means we get the month that just closed out. So I'm here at the beginning of October showing you the September data. Now uh, we're looking at King County, Snohomish County, Bellevue, and Seattle. And you can see that the green line is Bellevue and that is just topping off everything with really high prices and really strong price growth. If you look over here on this column on the left, you can see the median sales price for new construction homes in Bellevue is up to 3.3 million, almost 3.4 million here and a 21% price increased year over year. But I'm gonna look at closed volume so we can see how many homes that represents. That's only um, about five to 10 homes per month. That's a really low amount of data to be drawing from. And so it makes it pretty unreliable. Suffice to say, we don't have a lot of uh, spec builders putting in tract homes here. These look like custom homes in really nice areas, uh, probably one-off types of homes. We can look at the condos. Are there any new construction condos being represented in Bellevue? Uh, just a few here, about one per month being closed, if any. And for condominiums, the median home price is still showing at three million. So what I'm gonna do is take out this Bellevue data now because it makes it a little bit harder to see these other graphs because it just pushes everything down since it's just completely on a different scale. So now we're looking at King County, Snohomish County, and Seattle. And we have a little bit more space between the lines to take a look at. This is all new construction. And let's look at all property types, not just condominiums. And so what we're seeing here is that uh, the new construction in Snohomish County is not really going up in price the way that we might have expected. It was really high um, in that 2022 era when uh, it was kind of the tail end of COVID, interest rates had started going up and so prices started coming down. At that point in time, a lot of people wanted to live out in you know the suburbs and beyond because they weren't having to come into work. There were a lot of hybrid work options. A lot of people were buying affordable homes. Now, with interest rates having gone up since then, we've seen prices come down, but it looks like the beginning of 2023, we saw prices start to come back up during the, the last year here in 2024. We've seen interest rates coming down, making things more affordable, but people are also feeling the squeeze with inflation and other things going on. So to me, in the last year since uh, January, let's just smooth out some of this data so it's not quite as bumpy. Maybe that'll give us a better sense of the trend. So since January, we've seen new home construction prices going up throughout the year, as we would expect, with a little trail off in Snohomish during the uh, summer months here, where it kept climbing in uh, King County and Seattle. So that's very interesting. I don't necessarily know why that is. I would expect that people are wanting to be closer to work. There's more demand for things that are closer to the light rail, places where people can go into the office, more like Amazon is now saying people have to be in the office five days a, a week. So that's my sense is that we're gonna be moving back toward the demand for the Seattle area market and less for like, oh, I can live an hour and a half away and just drive in once or twice a week. That's kind of what I'm seeing reflective here. Also, we have things like what types of new construction is being built. Is it townhouses? Is it single family homes? I know in the Shoreline area, the Linwood area, as those light rail stops open north of the Northgate Mall, we're seeing a lot of new construction townhomes and condo types of buildings that are, uh, they're nice and they're new, but we're also going for affordability, walkability to the light rail, which means proximity to the freeway and on busier streets, there's been a lot of rezoning. So I'm seeing a lot of those types of properties coming in between about 450 and 800,000, you know, and obviously there's more, there's always more different things, but we can get a feel for with that medium price point here between about 740 in Snohomish, 800 in Seattle and 900 
in King, it does suggest that the more expensive homes might be a little bit bigger homes selling for more money outside of the city of Seattle itself. So looking at new listings, this tells us how many homes are coming onto the market, completions, what's for sale. That looks like it was going down throughout the spring and has started to come back up again with new listings coming available. How much inventory is out there, homes for sale, that's been going up and up and up throughout the year, which indicates maybe the market is a little bit softer, or it could indicate that more units are becoming available. But we saw here, we don't really feel that more units are coming available. So it may just be that what's there is not getting scooped up quite as fast because of affordability concerns or something similar. If we look at closed sales, closed sales are down. Not as many people are buying. And I have um, a mortgage broker that I network with who tracks a lot of this data as well. And he's saying that he just feels like a lot of buyers are on the fence. A lot of buyers are being picky and taking their time. A lot of buyers are uh, waiting for interest rates to come down. So even though they have come down significantly, now interest rates are around 6.2%. We are just not seeing a big resurgence in demand. It's kind of this lull. And I think that if interest rates come down significantly more next spring, we could see, as we often do in spring, a big uh, uptick in sales prices. So here's January. Prices tend to go up. Here's January. That year, prices didn't really go up. Here's January. Prices tend to go up. So typically, we do see prices going up, but it's not as clear. It's not as definitive in this new construction data as it is in other, like the used previously owned housing data. So that's very interesting. Now let's look at days on market. We have between uh, 15 and 20 days on market. It's kind of the average for the new construction homes. And this is shorter than I would have thought. I see on the MLS a lot of homes just kind of sitting there for 180 days as new construction homes. I don't know if it's a pre-construction, a model home, something that's not really for sale. But the way a lot of these builders tend to do it is that they will release new homes every week with the pricing to be revealed at that point. So builders typically say, you know, every week on this project, I'm completing three new units, let's say one with a garage, one with two bedrooms, one with one bedroom, no parking, etc. kind of a, a mix of variety. And so they see, you know, do I have buyers lined up to buy this? It was a really busy weekend at the job site. You know, there's a lot of interest or is it kind of like oh, not, not so much interest? So they'll release these homes oftentimes on a Wednesday. They'll have a certain price point and their goal is for anybody and everybody who's interested to submit an offer and ideally bid up the price. But I have found in new construction that oftentimes there's room to negotiate on the price, negotiate for some appliances, negotiate for some closing costs or some interest rate buy downs. So knowing kind of what's happening with the supply and the demand here, as well as the specific builder, DR Horton, for example, just closed out their fiscal year at the end of the fiscal year is often a really great time to negotiate because they want to get properties off the books before that deadline comes through. So just knowing what's going on with the builder, how well their inventory is selling, etc., can help you negotiate a better deal. That's why I always advocate for home buyers, even if you're looking at new construction, to ask a real estate agent to help you. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Typically, the builder has baked in my compensation into their pricing model. They sell it to you the same, whether or not you have an agent. But remember, the on-site agent represents the builder. Their goal is to make you buy it, and their goal is to get the best price for the builder. My goal is to help protect you, make sure that you get a great inspection, make sure that you negotiate a discount on all the things that you can negotiate on, get any add-ons, etc. And also if that is not a good builder, if that's you know something's wrong with that site, if there's things that are kind of like red flags about that project, I'm going to throw those red flags and let you know, hey, <laughs> you might not want to look at this project, maybe you want to look at the other building project down the road. So even if you're thinking about buying new construction, it's a really great idea to work with a reputable real estate agent who can help you negotiate those things and go in with your eyes open. You just got to get that realtor on board to help you before you walk into the job site. If you go in there on a Saturday unrepresented, it's going to make it really hard for you to bring in representation later on. So start early. 
get connected with a realtor and I can help you protect you and save you money and hopefully uh, get, get away from any sketchy builders with bad practices, etc. So anyway, we're going to look at days on market. We're going to see how strong your offer has to be. And then shows just it's like how many people are going through this unit before they make an offer. And oftentimes this is a little bit skewed because with new construction homes, you can have a model. Maybe you've never seen your unit that's for sale, but you've walked through the model home or you've gone to a construction site and I've taken you through six or seven different units and you're only going to be buying one of those, but they're a lot open. So there are a lot of people going through. So I'm not exactly sure how they track this data on new construction. I don't believe this is entirely accurate. If we look at the percentage of the sold price versus list price, it looks like things are selling pretty close to full price here. But like I said before, there's often room for negotiation. Builders do not like to lower their, their price because that gets published and the next buyer that comes along is going to see, you know, unit number one sold for $500,000. And then they're going to make an offer on unit two. They're also going to feel pressure to, to buy it for $500,000. Or maybe the builder will say the next one is even nicer. We're going to price it at five hundred ten. dollars So if you're buying that unit one and you negotiate a price down to four seventy-five, dollars that makes the builder look bad and it reflects poorly on um, his future sales. So they'd much rather give you like $10,000 toward closing costs, $10,000 toward upgrades in the unit, uh, $10,000 interest rate buy down, something else where they can give you some kickbacks or what we call concessions uh, without having to lower the sticker price because again, that's published and reflected to the other buyers in the marketplace. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about what's happening in the new construction market right now. We can always dial this in and really it depends a lot on the builder and the location and the type of home that you're looking at. So if you want data specifically on what you're shopping for, feel free to let me know. You can drop it in the comments, but best is to reach out to me through my website, homeproassociates.com, or you can text the word home, H-O-M-E to me personally, um, and I will get you started on the home buyer process that way. Would love to work with you, would love to represent you. This is me formally applying for the job. I really do like to give people as much data as they can so you can make your own great decisions. I will guide you through that process, but you're the boss at the end of the day, and I'm here to help. So thanks again for watching. I'll look forward to hearing from you, and until then, I'll see you on the next video.